Hey everybody, welcome back to the brand new episode of Throwback Thursday. I was looking at the boxes that I have on my shelf, and I saw this box of 1994 tops there, and I realized I've never opened 94 tops in all the weeks and months and years that we've been doing Throwback Thursday. I've been doing the series now for at least probably about three years. I've never showcased this uh, product on the channel right here. Some of you guys, maybe 1994 was the year that you got into collecting and you might want to see this box opened, or maybe you've seen these boxes here or there and wondered if there's anything good in there. We're going to open it up right now and see what we can find. Uh, this box is for my PC. Uh, hopefully I can find some Topps black gold cards in here, but it was $20 that I paid for this box. And I bought this box a little while ago. I'm not sure what these boxes go for nowadays. I picked this up probably about six months ago or so out at a card store in Ohio. Now, in terms of 1994 Topps, there are two series for this 94 set. There's still 792 cards in the complete set. As you guys know, for the longest time there, at least when I was growing up, 792 was the standard number for cards in a top set. There's 396 cards in Series 1, which is what we've got here. In terms of top rookie cards, the best guy that we can find in Series 1 is the Billy Wagner rookie card, which uh, he uh, hopefully will someday make it into the Hall of Fame. I think that uh, Wagner should be in there. But also there's Topps Gold cards in here. There's one card in every single pack in terms of those Topps Gold. And also we're chasing the Topps Black Gold, Topps Black Gold cards are one in every, I think, 72 packs, and those are pretty tough to come by. So Series 1 and Series 2 looks like um, probably about the same in terms of uh, what you'd pay for the box. There's not one, like, crazy rookie card. In fact, the Billy Wagner is probably the best one in 94 tops. You can see back in 1994, they were 79 cents. You can see that Barry Larkin's on the box. And who's that? Is that Spike Owen doing a jump throw over? I uh, can't really tell who it is. There's Randy Johnson on the side of the box. We've got Doug Drabick also on the side of the box. Doug Drabick was a Cy Young Award winner back in, I think it was, what was it, 91? Did he won the Cy Young? Went on to the Astros, had a good year or two, but then um, kind of lost it not too long after that. So here's our packs. Hopefully they're not going to be all bricked up. You can see there was 12 cards in 1994 as they started to kind of drop it down a little bit. I guess they didn't want to really increase the price too much. 79 cents may be, uh, I can't remember, guys. Was that a 10 cent increase over what 93 tops was? Uh, but I definitely feel like the pack, or the total number of cards in the pack definitely decreased from 93 to 94. Also, 94 was the strike shortened season in which uh, baseball was wiped out and there was no World Series that year. So you can see there is a uh, 1 in 72 packs so of the odds of getting one of those Topps Black Gold cards, which. I absolutely love those as a kid. I used to go after them all the time. Looks like these cards are not sticking too bad. We've got the all-star cards. I always thought these were really cool. we got Jeff Blauser and Cal Ripken Jr. Those are the starting shortstops for the 1994 all-star game. And let's see what we've got. Looks like there's just a little bit of stickiness in here. You can see some of the cards will end up probably being just a tad bit damaged, which uh, I guess it's good I'm taking these for the PC. We've got our first gold card of the day. This is going to be a Julio Franco, who had a great career, almost played until the age of 50. We've got Greg Swindell, Chris Donalds. There is a Brad Rennington and Alan Watson there at the old Bush Stadium. I can tell you, I did not like the design of these when these first came out. I was not a fan. I remember being as a kid like, these cards are ugly. We'll show you the back here in a second, this next pack. I'm going to have to go and... Do a little bit of shimming in there to get the cards started for us. Here's what the backs look like. You can see a Huck Flenner. Anyone have any idea who this guy is? Um, if uh, if not, you're not alone. I don't remember him at all. But I feel like the backs are pretty cool. There's a nice one. Cal Ripken Jr. used to love this card as a kid. Scott Service used to have a big Cal Ripken Jr. binder where I'd keep all my Ripkins. It'd be nice to find one of his cards. There's a Greg Myers, Ricky Henderson with the Blue Jays. I always used to love looking at his stat line. Look at all those stolen bases, how he would lead the league basically every year except 87 when he was injured and missed uh, almost half the season. Kevin McReynolds, whenever I think of Kevin McReynolds, I think of the season he stole 22 bases without being caught stealing. I always thought that was pretty cool. What year was that? Um, or 21 bases. Maybe it was 1989, 21-0. And Jeremy Burnett's his last one with Bobby Bowe on the front of the card. Mets fans definitely... Probably don't really like Barry Bonds, or not Barry Bonds, Bobby Bo that much as he was, um, as he still gets paid a million dollars every July 1st. There's Robbie Alomar. 
who is a Hall of Famer, but not a very popular Hall of Famer these days. We've got Gerald Perry, former hitting coach there for the Pirates. Otis Nixon was a very quick guy. That's his uh, gold card. Mike Piazza, gold cup card. Again, not a rookie card. Don't be confused. His rookie card's 92 bum. And there's Robin Yount and Jose Bautista and Alan Trammell, Hall of Famer as well in that pack. Lots of Hall of Famers throughout these um, releases from the 90s. A lot of great players. And uh, definitely having just a tad bit of damage on some of the cards. I'm going to have to try not to so aggressively bust them open. I mean, what if our gold card is a Billy Wagner? There's a, speaking of Billy, there's Billy Hatcher. Used to be a coach. And then it was Spike Owen. We got two gold cards. Spike Owen, gold card. He was the guy that was on the front of the box. There's Ken Hill, who had a great season. Uh, back in, uh, really, 92, 93, 94, was kind of a lights-out pitcher. And Jeff Nelson, speaking of lights-out pitchers, he was uh, the setup man for Mario Rivera, had that nasty sidearm delivery, throwing those Frisbee sliders. I don't know how he made the ball break like that, but uh, he was something else. Jeff Nelson was great for those um, Yankees teams in the mid to late 90s. Next pack up, future star card of Rich Becker. Some of you might be familiar with that design because out of um, – archives from what was that 2019 archives we had some future star cards look like that vlad jr has a card like that in that set kelly wunch draft pick card not really a uh, a notable card whatsoever let's go ahead and flip these upside down we have a brent main mark carry on is in there as well there's mark wooler's flame throwing closer for the braves an integral part of that 1993 world series championship mark dewey you can see some a little bit of paper loss on that Mike Harkey, Ryan Thompson, Steve Carsey, got a Mike Lansing, and Jose Offerman, who once went absolutely berserk in a winter league game. And uh, I think he attacked somebody with a baseball bat, maybe? Uh, I don't know. I have to, have to double-check that story. But I think Offerman lost his mind at one point uh, down there in those winter leagues. There's a Matt Walbeck and Manny Ramirez future star card. That's not his rookie, but still a pretty cool one right there, Manny. Still, as of about a year ago, was trying to still continue his baseball career playing in Australia. I don't think it really worked out for him because of the whole pandemic, but that is a pretty cool one right there. Randy Tomlin used to be one of my favorite players around this time. was a big fan of him. Uh, there's Bryce Turing, Shane Mack. We've got Mark Lemke, who I hated with a passion. Craig Biggio is a Hall of Famer. And our last one is Rich Monteleone again. So you might say, why did you hate Mark Lemke? That guy was pretty cool. Well, Mark Lemke was a part of all those Braves teams that eliminated the Pirates. Pirates lost to the Braves in 91 and 92 in the NLCS, and uh, Lemke was a big part of those teams. So never got on board with guys like Lemke and Jeff Blauser. There's Nigel Wilson, who was a major star. You might remember everybody chasing after the 93 Upper Deck Nigel Wilson card. Man, that was a hot card. It was David Need and Nigel Wilson. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Nigel Wilson was the number one overall pick in the expansion draft. For the um, Marlins back in, uh, well, I guess they did that in 1992. Um, I forget what team had Nigel Wilson before that. Was it was it the Mets? I can't remember. And it just says he was drafted. Doesn't really tell us. I guess Blue Jays signed him in 87 as a free agent. That can't be right. Signed by the Blue Jays in 87 as a free agent. Well, maybe I guess it was. Nigel Wilson never really worked out. Also, David Need for the Rockies never worked out. David Need, one of the first pitchers to find out that you can't really uh, be that effective in Colorado, especially without the humidor back then. Imagine going into Colorado and having to be a top-notch pitcher and all the – basically, you're – man, the balls would just jump off the bat in that high altitude. There's Kurt Schilling, who maybe one day will be in the Hall of Fame. We've got a George Su – who's this guy? Tsunamis, never heard of him. And two gold cards, which would be a big win back in the day as a kid. Had a couple of packs with two gold cards. Maybe they're sticking together so much that um, that's going to happen from time to time. There's Greg Gagney in there as well. Next pack up, we'll see what we've got in here. This is the end of the first stack. Here's a nice one. Garrett Anderson had a great career. And Billy Brewer. Now, the Billy Wagner card that we're looking for, that is a draft pick card. So it'll have that clipboard background. That's the best rookie card in here. But it's fun to look at all these different players from this era and just kind of reminisce about them. Eric Anthony, 
I kind of used to like Eric Anthony as a kid just because he had the same name as me, even though he spells it differently. There's Darren Lewis. We've got Bobby Witt. A lot of you guys will know this name, Bobby Witt. That's Bobby Witt Jr.'s dad. Bobby Witt Jr., the number two overall pick a couple years ago. KC Royals. You'll probably see him in the big leagues at some point. Maybe it's a September call-up. He's pretty much ready to go. Here's a great card. This is Dolan Ryan's last ever Topps card. It says they got a special little logo on there. 27 seasons. There's his career totals. Look at all those strikeouts. And uh, 5,714 strikeouts. That is how he finished it up. Uh, still getting the job done even at the age of like 47 there in 1993. 66 innings and still struck out 46 guys. How about uh, in 92, 157 Ks and 157 innings. That was almost unheard of back then. Uh, like a strikeout printing, most pitchers couldn't even get close to that. Back then, pitchers weren't thrown all that fast. And uh, Nolan Ryan, definitely one of the all-time greats for sure. It's a mystery to some. How did Nolan Ryan stay so healthy through his entire career that he never blew his arm out, never had to have Tommy John or anything like that? There's Craig Biggio once again. Chili Davis, kind of a, a, I always thought his name was pretty cool. There's George Bell. When he first came up, he was known as Jorge Bell. We've got Eddie Murray right there saying, uh, you know, don't run on that wild pitch. And we've got Pat Kelly and Chris Turner telling a little joke there with the umpire, laughing it up about something. Next pack up. See what we can have. Coming out of this one. Still looking for Billy Wagner. He's not going to be right there. It's Jeff Granger draft pick card, Melvin Nieves. A lot of times, those first-round picks, a lot of them don't work out. You can go through basically any year of the draft, and uh, there's going to be a whole smattering of guys that were busts as first-rounders, some of them not making the major leagues whatsoever, some of them just being scrubs. And there's an Yvonne Rodriguez. I hope that doesn't happen with the Pirates with their first-round pick. Catcher out of Louisville, Davis. Henry Davis, I think. Uh, let's hope he makes it. And look who it is on the top. That's good news. Billy Wagner. Typically, I like to find the good cards in the middle of the pack, but with these cards sticking together just ever so slightly, it's best that he's on the top because the top cards in these packs have been in uh, great shape without any paper loss. Now, the paper loss has been coming in the middle of the stack. You can probably hear those cards separating right there. We got a Damon Buford coming up right there. There's a gold card of Curtis Laskanik. And another gold card of one of my enemies, Jeff Blauser. I shouldn't call him an enemy, just a guy I didn't really like. John Smiley, former Pirates pitcher who'd gone to have a 20-win season in 1991. Good old John Smiley. Had a pretty nice couple of years there for the Buccos. We got another All-Star card. I haven't found too many of these. The starting catchers for the 93 All-Star game, Mike Piazza, who uh, was a rookie, I guess, in 1993, starting it. Man, was he a nice pick. I think Piazza was actually drafted in the 63rd round of the draft, which is, I mean, nowadays, they don't even go 63 rounds. There's a Deion Sanders. He was just almost, uh, actually, he was picked as a favor to Tommy Lasorda. Tommy Lasorda, of course, the longtime manager of the Dodgers and uh, very beloved there in Los Angeles. And I guess Mike Piazza was like his uh, godson or something like that, had some sort of family tie. So it was kind of like a uh, nepotistic pick. Is that a word? But he was he was picked because he, he had a tie to Tommy Lasorda. And just almost picked just for that reason only. And uh, Mike Piazza went from being just a skinny little high school kid that nobody wanted to uh, being a hulking beast and just hitting tons of home runs and hitting Hall of Famers. Now, of course, there's been a ton of steroid uh, innuendos around Mike Piazza from writers that uh, saw a bunch of back knee on Piazza, which I guess is a side effect to doing lots of steroids. And I don't think Piazza ever failed a, a uh, steroid test, though, so it's all just hearsay. But he's in the Hall of Fame, and uh, I'll tell you what, not saying Piazza, but definitely as some of those guys that are in the Hall of Fame for the 90s were users of steroids. I, I would pretty much guarantee it. And uh, for somebody like Barry Bonds and Clemens to be left out, I don't really uh, like that because they were some of the all-time greats for sure. I mean, he's the home run king, 762, and he's not in the Hall of Fame. I think he should be in there. You can go ahead and throw a big old asterisk on his plaque or whatever you want to do. But I, I don't know. I think maybe someday he's going to get in. I hope so. I, there's Greg Maddox and a Jack McDowell started the All-Star game. 
forgot about Jack McDowell. He was pretty good. Now, when I think of Jack McDowell, first thing I think of is him storming off the mound at Yankee Stadium and uh, kindly extending the middle finger to the entire crowd, which is not what you want to do to your home crowd. So he didn't really endear himself, had a, a bad game there in Yankee Stadium, and the fans let him know that they weren't uh, very pleased with his performance, and he let the fans know that he wasn't pleased with them either. So whenever I think of Jack McDowell, that's just the first thing that comes to my mind. All right, next up we've got a Marcus Moore, just another Colorado pitcher that found out how tough it is to pitch in the high altitude. Greg McMichael, Gold Cup card. Get these turned around here a little bit. We've got Doug Jones, nice closer right there for a few years. Kim Batiste, our next one. It's going to be Rob Dibble, kind of a somewhat controversial closer with the Reds. I personally never liked Rob Dibble as a kid. We've got Todd Zeal, who was, uh, I guess, I don't know if you could consider him a failed uh a prospect, but his rookie card worth a bunch. And if you look at his first five years in the big leagues, never really did too much. Uh, those numbers, those home run numbers are pretty average. But back in 1990, everybody was all about Todd Zeal rookie cards. I remember buying packs of 1990 score, trying to find the Todd Zeal. And uh, had a nice career, uh, you know, a decent career, but not a, a superstar level career by any means. There's Joe McGran with his 218 earned run average back in 1988 which was his career season. We've got Dave Magadan, professional hitter right there. He would always be good for right around about uh, approaching a 300 average. Pat Listash, who was a very nice rookie back in, what was that, 92? Pat Listash, you can see 92, he had 290. Everybody was all about him when he came up, and then the next year he followed up with 244 and kind of fell off the face of the earth. Hey, the big hurt, Frank Thomas. Love that card a lot, and BJ Surhoff in there as well. We're about halfway through the box. Hopefully everyone's enjoying this uh, throwback Thursday. I hope I'm not blabbering too much about these players. Domingo Jean, Mike Bell, draft pick card. And we've got Doug Jones once again, Mark Deere. We'll probably start to see some repeats now. There's Lee Smith. We've got Brett Butler, who could always lay down a bunt whenever he wanted to. Derek May. Pete Clavilla, big Burly guy right there. Good for dingers and strikeouts. You can see he used to lead the league in strikeouts there. Obviously, um, still, if you look at those numbers, 349 at-bats, 99 strikeouts. Back then, that was kind of bad. But um, nowadays, that would probably be considered uh, pretty normal as strikeouts in the game have exploded. And look at this. It's a Derek Jeter. Very nice. It's on top, which is great because we know we're not going to have any paper loss. A lot of people mistakenly think, if you're new to the hobby, that this is Derek Jeter's rookie card because you see prospects, you see a ball on there. And uh, Derek Jeter's rookie card is the year before 93 tops. There he is, Derek Jeter looking very, very young. Almost doesn't even look like him. Derek Jeter, love that card, and I love this next card. It's George Brett's final tops card there as well. I think he retired right after this season with 3,154 hits. Still getting the job done there with 19 home runs in 93. I don't think Brett played in uh I don't think he played in 90 uh 94 after this. I, I don't think he did because I do not remember a George Brett 95 tops card. Maybe I'm just blanking out on it, but there's Will Clark who was a nice player. Jim Gott. Anytime I see Jim Gott, I think of the 92 Pinnacle where he's like flying through the air doing a karate kick. It's like one of the weirdest cards I've ever seen. Rick Sutcliffe, who had a great 19, what was it, 81 when he came over from the Dodgers. And uh, I can't remember. There's one season when he dominated, I think, both leagues. There's Bill Wirtz, Mark Grace, Phil Plantier screaming upon striking out and, like, almost crying there. Phil Plantier was another top-notch prospect that failed. Everybody wanted Phil Plantier cards. 92 score Plantier was really big because he came up in 91, hit 331 with 11 home runs and 148 at-bats, which is, like, one dinger every, like, 12 at-bats or whatever. And he was a big deal. You could see he bounced back in 93. He did hit 34 home runs with a 240 average, but kind of disappeared not too long after that. So his cards, his rookie cards, not worth anything nowadays. Got another prospect card. All these guys are basically failed in terms of uh, being stars in the big leagues. None of those guys really made too much noise. Billy Ashley was a slugger in the minors. That guy would put up huge home run numbers, and a lot of people thought he was going to be a big-time star, but it never really worked out for Billy Ashley. 
We've got Orlando Merced, JT Snow, which I used to love him as a kid. Doc Gooden. Man, Doc Gooden maybe could have been one of the all-time greats. He really struggled with substance abuse and addiction. And uh, he would have just been able to stay clean. Who knows? Maybe he could have been a Hall of Famer someday. Because you saw what he could do with the Yankees back like 96 through a no-hitter. But uh, definitely fell off the wagon a few times. Let's see what we've got coming up next. There's a Hall of Famer. It's Robin Yao. It's probably going to have some paper loss just a tad bit. See, I have a notification that I have 10% battery left. Better wrap this bad boy up soon. Don't want to have the video cut out. That would be terrible. I don't know what happens when that happens. Like, does the do I lose everything that I opened so far? There's Jeff Innes. We've got Chris Hammond and Wally Joyner, who was a big-time rookie star back in the uh, 80s. Everybody was all about Wally Joyner. Jason Giambi, that's a nice card right there. Jason Giambi prospect. Came up as a third baseman. Eventually would have to move over to first base and then eventually DH. There's Cliff Floyd, who was another great rookie star. I remember Cliff Floyd having his wrist completely fractured around this time. And some people thought that Cliff Floyd would never be able to play again. But uh, he recovered from that. Now he's a pretty good analyst for, I forget what channel he's on or what, uh, I don't know if he's on ESPN or not, but uh, he used to be on MLB Network Radio all the time, and he does a really nice job there. Cliff Floyd, next pack up. I'll go ahead and move these around. There's Pokey Reese, a.k.a. Calvin Reese. He was a uh, former bucker right there. Two gold cards in the pack, Gary D. Sarcina and Randy Tomlin. That's always nice. You got Lance Painter, Rich Amaral. There's a Kenny Lofton making a dive and catch. Vinny Castilla had a nice career. Basically, could only play in Colorado, though. If you look at his stats in Atlanta and compare him to Colorado, he wasn't good unless he was in Colorado. I think he actually left Colorado to go to the Braves and didn't do all that great. Went back to Colorado and was really, really good again, so... Vinny Castilla definitely loved the rarefied air out in Colorado. We've got an Andy Rice draft pick card. He never made it to the big leagues, to my knowledge. We've got Brady Anderson, who's well-known for hitting 50 home runs as a skinny leadoff hitter. Well, I mean, if you look here, you can see never really had a bunch of power. 92, he did hit 21 home runs, but then, boom, 50 dingers out of nowhere. Uh, that was pretty crazy. I think um, Brady attributed to creatine usage. There's Reggie Jefferson and Greg Olson and Kevin Brown doing the big old-fashioned leg kick. I think Kevin Brown may have been the first $100 million pitcher. Definitely had a great career. Next up, we have a pretty good one. It's Wade Boggs and Matt Williams. Matt Williams was one of the big names in 94. He had his season cut short. Everybody had their season cut short, but Matt Williams had... 43 home runs when the players went on strike. There's David Need, by the way. We talked about him a little bit earlier. Matt Williams had a shot at breaking the single-season home run record of 61. And uh, we'll never know now. Also, some other guys had some great opportunities, like uh, Tony Gwynn could have hit 400 that year. I think he ended with 394, something, something like that. Tony Gwynn, one of the all-time greats. Definitely wish he was still around. We got Brooks Kieschnick, who was a big power prospect, and then that didn't really work out for him. He actually tried to come back like later on in his really late 30s as like a knuckleball pitcher, a pitcher, and actually was in the minors and had a shot at it, but I don't think he made it back as a pitcher. I think he was on the mound a few times during his career. Kind of uh, almost a two-way player before Shohei Otani made it a big deal. Shohei Otani, of course, absolutely crazy this year. We've had another guy come close. Brendan McKay can maybe go both ways in terms of hitting and pitching and we've got a Cal Ripken once again already saw that card so we're starting to see some repeats right now and uh what is this no way congratulations you've just won I hit a winner of course it's like 20 years later and this card's longest part I would have been so happy with that card as a kid I remember my brother found one of those for like the entire gold set I was so jealous about that I love these Toss Black Gold cards, and there it is. I would have won all of these cards. McDowell, Palmero, Stanley, Molitor, Puckett, Thomas, Montgomery, Cal Ripken Jr., Ventura, Allroot, and Tim Salmon. But now, of course, that's long since expired. It expired in 1995. That is an awesome card. It's winner B, 
which I think they had four different winners, winner A, B, C, and D. And if you found winner like A, B, C, D with all the letters on there, you got the entire set. The odds of finding one of those winner cards are approximately, where are they at on here? Um, winner card for 22 is 1 in 720. Winner card for 11 is 1 in 180 packs. Get out of here. Man, that stinks. I wish they would just do what... Um, who did that last week with the uh, the super packs from 95 Donruss? Why not just do that? I wish they would have done that instead of having those. Then I could still actually have all the Tops Black Gold cards, but those cards are long since gone. Super packs is uh, 95 Donruss had it right. They put all of the cards in the entire set. Another Derek Jeter. How about that? Derek Jeter again. So two Jeter prospects, both in great shape with no damage at all. But... Uh, they put all of their inserts for the Mound Marvels and also for another set from a different series in the packs, which was a really cool idea. Uh, like, all 11 cards were right in the middle of the pack. They called it a super pack. And I wish uh, they could have done it with the top black gold cards. They could have figured out a way. I'm, I don't know if it was a collation issue and they were just unsure of how to get the uh, cards in there. There's another prospect card. I'm just going to go through these and see if there's anybody else of note because we are approaching 30 minutes and I don't want to... I try to stay away from going over 30 minutes. There's a Derek Bell's the last one. We've got just a few packs left. One Billy Wagner, two Derek Jeters, a black gold card, a winner, which is pretty awesome. Roberto Mejia. I used to kind of like him as a kid. Kurt Schilling once again. Pat Mears. There's John Smiley. Andrew Harsadeno. And Mo Stanford. Seeing a lot of repeats. Kelly Wunsch. Thank you, everybody, for joining us on this Throwback Thursday. There's Jombie for a second time. Melito Perez. Danny Darwin. Former Bucca right there. Our gold card is David Buford. Graham Lloyd also. A double gold card again. There's Yvonne Rodriguez for the second time. And our first time seeing Big Mac, Mark McGuire. That's a nice one right there. Charles Nagy and Danny Gladden. Four packs left. We've got the Manny for the second time. Manny Ramirez. Future star card. Mark Thompson as well. Probably we'll see all the same cards we saw in that last Manny Ramirez pack. There's Davey Martinez. George Bell for the second time. Ken Ryan. I'd like to find the, I guess, now in these last three packs, I'm looking for a gold card of Derek Jeter or Billy Wagner. That would be pretty awesome. Unfortunately, the gold cards are, are the ones that get the paper loss in these packs. There's Dutch, Darren Dalton, Ozzie Smith. First time seeing Ozzie. The Wizard. He's a Hall of Famer, of course. Tom Gordon. And the right smack dab in the middle. Man, does this, did this one not have a single gold card? I bet that Tom Gordon's our gold card. Yep. There's Craig Grebeck. Jeremy Burnett and Scott Brocious is the last one. Two packs left. Probably will just beat the clock in terms of um, getting the video done before my phone dies. I'll have to go plug it in. Get it all nice and charged up. Brent Main. We got a Russ Springer right there. Man, these are sticking a little bit now more than ever. I'm glad that the stickiness waited until the end. Hey, Pedro J. Martinez, Alan Trammell for the second time, and Pedro Martinez, Hall of Famer right there. And here's our final pack of the video. Again, thank you very much for watching, everybody. Really appreciate your support. Hope you'll hit that thumbs up button for me and, um, you know, tune in every day. We've got videos every single day. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to film tomorrow. I'm thinking about maybe a face-off Friday, maybe a... Um, a mail day. I have a whole bunch of packages to open up. Uh, maybe a card store video. So I'll decide on that tomorrow and get that uploaded. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Turn on those post notifications so you don't miss a thing. And that will do it. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Hope you guys have a great rest of your Thursday. Hope you enjoyed this look at 1994 Tops. And once again, thanks for watching. And I will see you all tomorrow. Good night, everybody.